This week, we're going to tell you a dark and twisting story of a ghost town being swallowed by the dunes. A long forgotten place where once people found fortune in diamonds that were scattered on the sand. And we meet Africa's only herd of wild horses, abandoned here long ago and adapted to a life roaming the desert of southern Namibia. This is the oldest desert in the world where you can really contemplate the age of time itself. We are the Newbies, a family of travel adventurers on a mission to make our minutes and seconds matter. I'm Tara, born and raised in Africa and obsessed with wild things and wild places. This is John. He's lived a life on the road and has visited 163 countries. And this is our son Crusoe, who has ambitions to get to 100 countries before he goes to school. He's going to need our help with that, so hit that subscribe button and join us every Sunday as we discover our extraordinary world as a family, teaching us all to be brave, think big, and to explore. Horses, but they're walking away. Are they? Yeah. I think let's carry on. Let yeah. Crusoe sleep <laughs> yeah. and come back later. Absolutely. We are currently driving through the world's oldest desert, and this area of Namibia has got the most remarkable story attached to it. Yeah, we are going to take a journey and um, drag you along with us through the the desert, not only is it the oldest desert in the world, but it's one of the most fascinating too. And the story that we're going to tell today has diamonds, ghost towns, wealth, a collapse of industry, and what's been left behind is a ghost town and Africa's only wild horses. It's very exciting and I cannot wait to explore. Absolutely. Stick around because this is going to be a journey and a story you're going to want to hear all about. We're driving this morning along the line of the railway track and about to pass an old railway station. And it's quite pertinent actually because the first diamond was discovered by a fellow who was sweeping sand off the railway lines about a hundred years ago. We have arrived. There is a ghost town. There is a ghost town, abandoned by its inhabitants long ago. And now the desert is taking it back. Let's go and have a look. That was a hundred Namibian dollars each to get in which equates to about five quid each. Five pounds each, and that includes a tour that starts at 9.30. Now, not usually one for tours. Where was the last place we had at Robin Island? And it wasn't very good, was it? Um, but I've been on this tour before, long time ago, and I can tell you that it's fascinating. The price of the tour is included with your entrance fee and we would thoroughly recommend it. The guides tell the story of a town that was once filled with diamonds and prosperity. A story of greed and one of a desert that gave and then took back. While I listened intently, it was clear that Crusoe had other plans. And so John and Crusoe headed out far from the tour to explore a little before I would join them later. Crusoe couldn't wait to come and explore on his own. so. We've left the tour group and we're going to have a wander around and see what interesting things we can find. The wind has blown sand into a lot of the buildings. Half of the buildings, I'd say, at least the lower ground floor is completely inaccessible. And then there are some buildings like this that are quite open to the environment, open to the desert surrounding us, that are just absolutely filled with sand. Mm. 
Look at the paintings on the walls they used to. Such an impressive room once upon a time and now it's just filled with sand. As a person who really likes a piece of wood, I can appreciate this banister massively. Look at how beautiful that is. Somebody spent a lot of time making that. I wonder what's upstairs. Whoever built these stairs did a really good job. They are solid still. Wow, look at that. That looks like it would have been a kitchen. Just trying to imagine what kind of people lived here and what each room was for. It certainly was once upon a time really beautifully decorated and there's a real eerie feeling as we walk around. I don't know. It feels a bit funny. You almost get a sense of how it would have been to live here in this really harsh environment. Nowadays, of course, it feels more like the wildlife has started to move in. There's, a, there's the sound, the wind is making things knock a little bit in, in one of the rooms upstairs. I'm sure it's the wind anyway, and it feels like really, I don't know, not spooky, not really creepy, but definitely, I don't know, you probably wouldn't want to be walking around here at night on your own. What do you think, Chris? So the moment the diamond miners will have abandoned this place, the desert will have started taking it back for its own. The sunshine and the dryness has preserved them so well. Without the wind, we'd probably be walking straight back into what they left all those years ago. No wood rot, no metal rusting. It's all just here. Almost like it's ready for a lick of paint and ready to go again. Mm, this looks like an interesting building. Cranken House, it says on the outside. Let's go and have a look inside, see what's there. There is nobody around. It is properly weird down here. You know, more than ghosts jumping out at me. I am sort of a bit nervous about maybe, I don't know, some animals jumping out. Certainly it smells a bit funky in here. So I think I'm gonna call it and head on out of here. Go and find Tara. She'll be around somewhere. Come on Crusoe, let's get out of here. Hello my darling, caught up with you. Yes you did. I've just been on the tour, which was fascinating, and I've learnt some amazing snippets. So this was the general store, and you could buy anything you wanted in here. Food, equipment, furniture, clothes, I mean, shoes, shoes. Fancy. Crusoe and I have just come from what's Thank called you. the Kranken House. Okay. We walked in there. And it was a little bit spooky, so we came back out again straight away. I want to see it. We thought we'd come and get you to have a look. I want to see it. Yeah, cool. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> very first x-ray machine ever to exist on the African continent and it was here not to x-ray just for broken bones but also to x-ray for diamonds. Oh I just got shivers. <laughs> 
So Crusoe and I got halfway down there and turned around and came back. Can you smell that, Don? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these buildings, I think, um, have been abandoned and animals are living in them now, which is why I'm a bit nervous about walking all the way down there. I'm not sure how we get out if something jumps out at us. And what did you say about adders? Yeah, horned adders live in the sand. Apparently, you'll just see their little horns sticking out. Let me know. Okay. Those buildings look like mice or something, don't they? I can handle mice. It's things that are slightly bigger, all that live in the sand. I'm not keen on. All that lived hundreds of years ago. All that lived hundreds of years ago. Thanks for that, darling. So this town has got the most amazing history. First of all, the reason it's called Coleman's Cop is quite silly, really. A chap called Johnny Coleman, who came up from Cape Town, was driving his wagon one day to Luderitz and broke down, just down the road. <laughs> he left his wagon there for about four years because he couldn't move it. And so for anybody else who was passing along this way, this became known as Coleman's Hill or Coleman's Cop, or when the Germans came, Coleman's Kuppa, I think is how you say it. Because he broke down, he had a whole town named after him. That's amazing. Ah! Isn't it? <laughs> we have to remember that if we ever break down. I know, right? Crusoe and I, earlier on, were exploring a big building over there, one of the fancier ones. Come and have a look at it. Hopefully you'll be able to bring it to life for us and tell us a little bit about it from what you've learned on the tour. It was an evening in 1908 when a Namibian railway worker named Zacharias Lewala was shoveling railroad tracks clear of creeping sand dunes and saw some stones shining in the low end of daylight. He knew what they were and handed them into his German employer. It wasn't long before it was confirmed. The first diamonds had been found and it changed the course of history for this patch of desert sand and the people who came here in search of fortune. Lewala himself was never paid or rewarded for his find. Did you see the parrot up there? This must have been absolutely beautiful. Wow, look at the wallpapers and the... I mean, it feels like... This place must have been so beautiful. You can really get a sense for the kind of splendor that lived here. You know, the diamond industry in those days wanted for nothing. Whatever latest technologies there was, electricity, phones, all of it was here when they arrived in 1910. And every single thing you see in this town was imported from Germany. Nothing came from the African continent, not even the wood. So that is the furthest house in the town, and it was the manager's house. Should we go and have a look? Yep, let's go and have a look. There is so much history here, you can, you can feel it in the sand, you can feel it in the wind, you can feel it in the walls, you can hear it in the echoes. diamond fields on the precipice of changing their lives forever. Mega. If you're coming to Namibia, this has to be on the list. Oh, 
of that wind and that blasting sand. I think it's time to go, my little man. What do you think? Oh, hectic out there. Right, um, let's go to Luderitz, shall we? Let's go to Luderitz. Okay. Before we go, worth noting, this place is only open until one o'clock. Yeah. And I have a feeling it's because of the wind. Yeah, it's When we really arrived, hectic. it was windy, but it wasn't hectic. Now, it's actually just difficult being out there. Ah, oh, there's sand everywhere. Me too. It's gonna be fun brushing our hair later. I genuinely think that's one of the most remarkable places I've ever been. I absolutely love that. You could have stayed there for hours and hours and hours. And if you are keen on photography, you're just never going to leave. It's so beautiful. Uh, there's uh, some contractors houses just over there on the horizon. They're quite difficult to film because we can't get up too close to them. And our guide told us that the contractors lived in there 48 people to a room. Wow. So those were the guys that did the hard work and where we've just been wandering around those what were once extremely opulent houses, those were the, the men and the women who reaped the benefits, reaped the rewards of the diamonds that were found literally on the surface of the desert right here. The opulence over there was so much so that they even made a railway track around the town there yeah. because the women would wear big, fancy, lacy, beautiful dresses and they were so cumbersome and so hot they were unable to walk through the sand dunes of the desert. Yeah. So they just jumped on the, on the railway that was pulled by a horse. Mules. 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 <laughs> Um, and they, they would go from shop to shop, from house to house on the, on the railway. Extraordinary. And they had an ice machine there. An ice machine as well, goodness me. <laughs> One of the most fascinating things I thought was learning that the diamonds in this area actually came from Lesotho and Kimberley in South Africa. So the guide was telling us that if you imagine the kind of fizz that comes out of the top of a Coke bottle when you open a Coke, there was so much tectonic movement in that area that the diamonds were basically spewed out of the ground, just like the fizz out of a Coke. And the Orange River carried them to this area because the mouth of the Orange River is just a bit further south from here. We saw the Orange River when we were in Uppington on our way through the Namibian border. And from the Orange River sort of alluvial deposits, the diamonds were also carried by wind across the desert. They're alluvial diamonds, which means they're only found on the surface and they were all gemstone quality. So basically the, the diamond mines that we drove past in Lesotho. Yeah, the same diamonds that were found here in the early 1900s. That's so cool, and that's man. why there are no more diamonds here. I mean, there might be, obviously, but you could have to like comb through an entire desert of sand looking for them. 12% of the world's diamonds at the time were coming from um, the surface of that desert. Coleman's Cop. Wow. It's cool, isn't it? And we've arrived in Luderitz. Oh, there's backpackers. The coastal town of Luderitz has a history as colourful as its buildings. Famous Portuguese explorer Bartholomew Dias planted his flag here in 1488, but it wasn't until the Germans arrived in 1883 that the town began to take shape. It sits perched where the rocky Atlantic Ocean coastline meets the Nama of Desert and has weathered not just the windy fog of the Atlantic, but also the frenzy of a diamond rush in Namibia and the rise and fall of many fortunes over the years. We didn't have much time to spend there, but were charmed by the place as we enjoyed a wander through the town to admire the old German architecture and beautiful buildings before we set off back into the desert. We were on a mission to see these very special desert horses. This would be our third attempt of the day to find them, and we had everything crossed that luck was in our favour. What do you think the odds are, darling? I think they're pretty good. Um, end of the day, watering holes are, are usually quite busy, aren't they? Yeah. And there's a watering hole at this, um, this viewing point for the horses, so I'm, I'm quietly optimistic. Okay, we think we can see dark patches at the waterhole. But this is not the nicest road, so we're going to tackle it for the third time today. Ah, oh, the old road. But it's going to be worth it, right? 
Yeah, hopefully we see something else except for... Oryx. Oryx. Yes. I see a horse. I see a horse, I see a horse on the left. Crusoe is as delighted as we are. We got him, man. We saw them. Isn't that cool? That was unbelievably special. What do they say about third time lucky? There you go. Crusoe was even quiet. <laughs> Dead, man. <laughs> that is so cool. And that was a herd of, I actually didn't even get a chance to count them. We were so frantic um, and excited and trying to get a shot of them. But there are definitely two, if not three, foals there, which is amazing to see, because that obviously means that they're thriving and reproducing and the population's increasing. Oh man, we are now heading up to the main road to see if we can get a better shot for them. Um, and like spend they're a heading bit more... that way to cross. Exactly. So. And spend a bit more time with them. So, God, amazing. So what makes these horses even more remarkable is that nobody really knows their exact origin. The myths and legends range from a German baron who abandoned his herd and left them to, to roam wild through the desert. Or their ancestors were horses that were used by the German soldiers during the fighting in World War I. Whatever the truth is, the fact, the one fact remains is that their future is really uncertain and they do really struggle in dry years. And Namibia's just come out of eight years of drought, so the population is in decline. And they are a very special feature of the Namib Desert. They're the only wild or feral herd of horses on the African continent, which is remarkable. And I just hope that one day, if we come back here, which I'm sure we will, we will meet the Narmoon horses once again because that was really quite special. I mean, it's like meeting a lion in the Serengeti, right? It is, yeah, it is. And you know what's also quite cool? The whole theme of today is we looked at Coleman's crop as well this morning and thought, will this be here in 50 years or is it going to be completely swallowed by the desert? Are we visiting things today that speak of a history of hundreds of years ago that perhaps won't be here in hundreds of years to come? Makes you feel really lucky to be on the road. We have thoroughly enjoyed exploring this part of Namibia. It's been, well, nothing short of epic, quite yeah. frankly. My favourite, favourite bit by far. So thank you so much for watching. This is now episode number six, five or six of our great African adventure. So we we are well underway. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, they're very cool, including penguins, including Tara driving up one of the world's coolest, most dangerous passes, and of course, the world's second largest canyon. If you've enjoyed this episode, which we dearly hope that you have, please do remember, like, subscribe, turn on those notifications so that you don't forget to watch Tara scramble her way up Big Daddy. Leave us a comment because we love hearing from you. Absolutely. And we will see you next week petrified at the top of a sand dune or standing at the bottom in a petrified forest.